Thereas, a little-known heating technique from the Second World War I, so simple and so overlooked that most people today would never imagine how vital it once was. In an era when fuel lines collapsed, electricity flickered on and off, and winter hardships hit civilians just as harshly as soldiers, families, and resistance groups relied on this unlikely source of warmth. It wasn't a stove. It wasn't a heater. And it certainly wasn't some military-issued device. It was a candle yet, not an ordinary candle by any means. It was a specialized wartime formula that burned hotter, lasted longer, and produced far more usable heat than the survival candles sold in stores today. To understand why such a small invention mattered so much, we need to step briefly into the world of the early 1940s. Fuel rationing hit households and nearly every nation involved in the conflict. Coal and oil were redirected toward machinery, vehicles, and heating for military installations. Urban blackouts were enforced for safety. Electricity in frontline towns or occupied cities was unreliable at best and non-existent at worst. Civilians and soldiers needed heave something portable, dependable, and made from whatever scraps they could find. The candle became a symbol of resilience, but this particular reinforced Talawax version became a literal lifeline. The formula emerged because people had to improvise. Paraffin wax, the main ingredient in civilian candles, was scarce. It was urgently needed for waterproofing equipment, lubricating machinery, and packaging military supplies. Families and soltjies turned to what they did, haftalo, a rendered animal fat found in kitchens, butcher scraps, and field rations. When blended with even small amounts of wax, this fat dramatically increased burn time, stabilized the flame, and produced more heat. But the real secret wasn't just the mixture it was the wick. Wartime households created thick, slow-burning wicks by braiding strands of cotton and then soaking them in salt water. After drying, these treated wicks burned hotter, cleaner, and more steadily than standard ones. When you put these parts together, tallow, scrap wax, and a salt-treated braided wick you got a candle that burned significantly hotter than anything mass-produced today. And that heat was exactly what people needed. Soldiers used them to warm dugouts, thaw frozen equipment, and keep their fingers functioning during long patrols. Civilians relied on them to heat tiny rooms during fuel shortages or blackout periods. A powerful example of this comes from winter campaigns on the Eastern Front. Conditions were brutal. Soviet soldiers dug into frostbitten trenches often had no access to proper heating fuel. They crafted these candles from ration fat. Tiny amounts of scavenged wax and bits of cotton ripped from worn shirts or field dressings. A single palm-sized candle could warm a corner of a dugout, dry damp gloves, or thaw frozen water rations. Many accounts describe soldiers placing the candle beneath a clay pot or tin can, creating a small microheater. This wasn't comfort. It was survival end. It often meant the difference between frostbite and functionality. Civilians behind the lines faced similar hardships in besieged cities where coal deliveries stopped and stoves went cold. These reinforced candles helped families heat a single living space. They didn't raise overall room temperature by much, but the radiant warmth they produced allowed people to gather around them and stay warm enough to endure long nights. What made these candles so effective was the chemistry of tallow. It burns with a higher energy density than paraffin, meaning more heat is released over time. It also melts slowly, producing a deep melt pool. That deeper pool creates a broader flame wider, hotter, and more radiant. And radiant heat is exactly the kind that warms bodies and objects directly, rather than just warming the air. In stonewalled wartime shelters, bunkers, and trenches, where air temperature barely shifted, this direct warmth was crucial. The salt-treated wick played an important role, too. The salt stiffened the cotton fibers, ensuring the wick stayed upright even in drafts. It also created a hotter flame that burned more cleanly, reducing soot and smoke. This mattered for more than just comfort. During wartime blackouts, visible smoke escaping from cracks could give away a shelter's location. A cleaner burning candle helped keep families and resistance networks hidden. Recreating this candle today is surprisingly simple. Start with wax any kind works, old candle stubs, store-bought wax, beeswax, or even scraps from broken candles. Then, 
add tallow, which can be purchased or made at home by simmering beef or mutton fat until it separates and solidifies. A practical field ratio is one part wax to two parts tallow. This sacrifices beauty, but maximizes heat output. Four, to wick braid, three strips of cotton. Soak them in salt water, allow them to dry fully, and you'll have a strong, slow-burning wick that produces excellent flame stability. Melt the wax and tallow together on low heat. Place the wick into a metal tin or jar and pour the mixture in. Once cool, you have a candle capable of lasting many hours and generating enough heat to make a real difference in a confined space. Modern uses are surprisingly practical. Preppers and campers use these candles under inverted clay pots to create controlled mic- Winter campers can place a few inside a safe metal enclosure to bump tent temperatures several degrees. Urban dwellers can use them during blackouts by placing a reflective metal sheet behind the candle to push radiant heat back toward them exactly the same method families used in World War II shelters. These candles offer a double benefit. They can heat a space and serve as a makeshift cooking tool. They produce enough steady heat to warm canned food or melt snow for drinking water. They also store indefinitely, don't rely on imported fuels, and can be made entirely from household scraps that would otherwise be thrown away. One detail that often gets overlooked is how these candles minimized smoke. In blackout zones, smoke could reveal a family's position, especially when enemy patrols were scanning rooftops and windows. The salt treatment and carefully balanced wax tallow mixture helped soldiers and civilians stay hidden. Modern versions behave the same way, making them ideal for emergency indoor use even today. Ultimately, the forgotten World War II candle formula is more than a relic of the past. It represents a practical bridge between historical ingenuity and modern preparedness. It shows how people under extraordinary pressure found ways to extract real heat from the smallest materials. It outperforms many modern survival candles. Because it wasn't, tea designed to be convenient or attractive it was engineered for survival in freezing conditions with no backup options. For enthusiasts of history, emergency preparedness, or simple se this candle is a powerful example of knowledge worth reviving. It is a reminder that the solutions we need in hard times are often the simplest ones born from necessity, refined by experience, and forgotten only because comfort replaced them. If you found this deep dive valuable and want more long-form explorations of forgotten wartime techniques that still have real modern applications, make sure to subscribe to. In the beginning and share this video so others can benefit from this knowledge, 